So there we were without uh, our director. And um, Father Earl, the, the priest of the Greek Orthodox Church, was there with his wonderful voice. And then Reader Nicolarius, which I had been standing by him and got to hear him sing. Oh my gosh. Now, I had watched interviews about the icon. And I did not know that in those interviews that that's who I was watching. And they're here on YouTube, and I will not say who it is. I will, I might give you a link, but I won't say who the person is and that kind of thing. Not to identify him, just out of his safety um, and protection. But his voice was so beautiful. So, we got to sing all four verses. I never sang with my Greek phrase before. And then getting the chance to sing with the reader was just like, how, can, how many blessings can I get in a day? I mean, really? Am I being greedy? Whatever. Then I had the chance, after all that was completed, to sit and chat with my Greek piece for like 20 minutes or something. He sits and he chats with me just because he's that cool. Okay. And um, he introduces me to his wife. Now, I didn't know his wife was right. She was the one that was saying, come over here and go over there and this and that. And so I explained to her, I'm so sorry, I didn't know yesterday, blah, 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 when she had asked me over the servant church to be anointed. Okay. There was a time when I had the opportunity to ask something of, of Rita Nicolaitis and he suggested that I take um, the bracelet of the pearls and touch it to her. And he said, you know, she'll always be with you. And I, I asked, I said, is it okay? I can approach her again? You know, he says, of course, please. You know. And um, I haven't worn that bracelet in ages upon ages. And yet, Yes, that bracelet has, has touched and been touched by her. But it's not something I think I would wear every day. Like thinking, you know, about that that's the connection. Because I know that only they talk is with me every day that I ask, you know. And I think it's kind of funny that I had that feeling of complete gratitude for it. But not like to get into, oh, I have to wear that pearl and that came from I think a very clear understanding that I had while we were having that little side lunch and um, this was this was the understanding that I that I got that um, God gives us these gifts and that we don't recognize the difference between um, the spirit the the gift that's being given to our soul and like for instance physical healing or something like that and you know how like kids when they'll get a present they'll like play with the wrapping and they'll play with the box but they won't play with the actual toy and the parent will sit there and go I bought the toy for you why are you playing with a box I think God watches us play with the wrapping and box you know or being mad about the wrapping and box not being there and not recognizing the gift of all of what's happening spiritually. Um, so that was a very clear thing I had in my head. Well, after all of that, the case that is that holds the icon herself, Father Earl was giving blessings with. Like I'm going to, you know, pass up another blessing. Thank you so much. So, got that, and then there were some people who I was really wanting to make sure I could get oil Q-tips for. So, 
I had gotten into a wonderful conversation with my friend Dennis again, you know, the one who drove me, my choir mate. And then we were talking with Father Philip and found out, you know, that um, the bishop was going to be staying for lunch. And uh, he asked me, you know, if I would come back or whatever for lunch. Well, because, you know, he, he was busy taking care of something, so he couldn't go ahead and get me the things now. So I said, okay, yeah, I'll stay. Well, I didn't get to stay long enough. Um, so, but it's okay because tomorrow I'm going back to church anyway and I'll just get that from him then if he has it actually for me, um, which would be a nice blessing. Um, and then my husband had been in the parade in the morning, so I really had to go. So I left and I won't say that was it because really it's just the beginning one of the things that um, Father Earl chatted with me about when we were sitting there for 20 minutes or however long it was, I had asked him um, if he knew about the curse root icon. And he said, yeah, and I had told him about how Dennis, who was busy at the time talking with Rita Nicolares, was, uh, he had many stories. And then... He informed me that that icon was coming here to town. Okay. I had thought the night previously when I was driving home from the Greek church that I, I wanted to go to see Curse Group. And she's in New York. So I was like, well, how am I going to manage all that? I was reading some more things about her and then I learned... Her feast is actually celebrated on the 27th of November. And 27th of November is the date that I recognize or count as the day that I would call, like, I don't know, my Christian birthday. If I would have such a thing. So that date is very important to me. And the fact that that's the one, um, I think, you know, even my completely atheistic son said, I think the universe is trying to tell you something. You think? So, then I found out that she's coming up to Safford, the monastery, Serbian one, that I love so much. One of the things I kept thinking, and I even said to, to Dennis, I can't wait to come back here. Why would I even come? I, I can't wait to go. I have to think, now I know why. Now I know why I'm going, because I'm going to go see Curse Groot. I couldn't believe it. So... <laughs> I'm going to have the opportunity to go back to the monastery and I'm going to have the opportunity um, to visit the Curse Group icon. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know if anybody is going to have specific questions um, and I don't know if I could even really answer any. I'm going to try to put some links but um, I would definitely say that there is no possibility when you go to experience venerating an icon of this nature that you will have any attachment to it physically. It always points you completely back to God and that is where the focus is. So for people who always are like, oh, this is idol worship, no, it actually does the reverse. It's like a reflection up of a mirror to, you know, remind you, you know, only God, only God, only God. And I know that people say that they're windows to heaven, and that's fine, but when they're laying there like that, it just feels to me like a mirror of only that you would ask God. And that, yes, you can ask them to, you know, pray with, pray for you. I remember the first time that I ever, like, said my own little prayers of, you know, Holy Mother this, Holy Mother that, whatever I would say. And I and I felt like I was like a little girl, like, pulling at, um, you know, like, <laughs> scared of my mother or grandmother as a child going, 
you know, will you help me? You know, like I was saying, can I learn to pray from you, with you? Will you show me? And um, it's only just gotten better and better and better. So I hope if you ever have any opportunity to go, um, that you will uh, make sure that happens in your life. Um, and, and yeah, I would definitely say, take a list of people whom you know you would want to, um, say prayers for, because one of the best feelings of going and saying all those prayers, um, was that none of them were really like, I wasn't thinking of myself. I wasn't praying for anything for me. It was it felt the best to be doing that and I don't know how to explain that but I'm sure that makes sense in and of itself so I hope you've enjoyed listening I really appreciate you watching and um, thanks so much for listening to peace <laughs>